Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Easy Conversations, a podcast about having easy conversations. I'm so excited to share this content with you and more. Uh, I want to build a community of people where we can simply normalize conversations that we have perceived to be hard. Um, if at the end of the episode, if you can leave a review, I would be really grateful. Your reviews will allow me to get better and also tailor my message and content accordingly. So thank you for doing that. Now, I'm again really excited about my very first guest on this podcast. He is a very close friend of mine, uh, just like a brother to me. His name is John Ciccioni. Uh, in this episode, I really want to explore John's journey through life, some of the challenges he had early on uh, growing up. And I want him to share his story about his experience with meditation. Um, he ended up at a silent retreat by accident and had to navigate through that whole process. And I want my listeners to be able to hear that message and understand how difficult it was for him, but he was able to navigate through. For people that are interested in going to a silent retreat, it'll give you an idea of what goes on there, as well as for people that have already experienced a silent retreat, you'll be able to relate. Uh, for someone like me who's never done a silent retreat, it was really cool to hear John's experience, and it only encouraged me to go try it out myself. Uh, so with that being said, I'm just going to jump right into the episode. I see how you set the bar very low. It can only go higher from here. Well, uh, <laughs> thanks for the boost of confidence, but uh, how are you? I'm good. No, you set the bar low. I'm saying is I'm your first guest. <laughs> oh, no, no. This is, uh, no, like, well, I'll touch on it later, but the whole theme is being able to share a message and, you know, like... And um, we've touched on this before, right? Like the whole oh, aspect of uh, mental health and and kind of men struggling with it. But how do yeah. we we simplify that and normalize that kind of conversation? And um, but you know, again, I'm really grateful for you, you know, to be here and doing this. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think the reason why I wanted to chat with you is because we've obviously had a lot of conversations uh, over the years, and yeah, and, man. Uh, there's, you know, I love the stories you have and, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a, there's a message to be, uh, taken from, from the stories and, uh, you know, I just hope the listeners can get that too. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, enough of that, but, uh, you know, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself. Uh, and then obviously I've got some questions for you that we can go through. <laughs> well, not that anyone gives a rat's ass about my story. But, uh, uh, my name is John, and uh, I am an <clears throat> entrepreneur. <laughs> no, I'm a, uh, I'm a hairstylist, a hair colorist, hairstylist. I got my own uh, salon, studio salon. And uh, it has been a long road, my friend, a long road of bad career paths and uh <laughs> seeking truth <laughs> of yeah. myself yeah and uh yeah man it's been a long effing road of just figuring it out and uh feel like uh you know it's been a good 20 years of just trying to figure it out and i feel that now it's finally going really well yeah, no, that's great. And what I appreciate about your story is that you've taken risks along the way. Um, it's been a hundred percent risk. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's that in itself is uh, it, no, it, it, failure. <laughs> it, well, but it's you know, and I this is cliche, but you know, Michael Jordan would say you miss hundred percent of the shots you don't take, right? So. Yeah. So in your case, yeah. you've been uh, brave enough to take those risks and not everyone can do that. Uh, yeah. I wish I had taken more risks when I was younger, but um, I mean, we're all destined for our own journeys, right? So, um, but, but so, so you talked about truths and stuff. So I guess one of the questions that I'm curious about, and I'm sure the listeners would be is as a hairstylist, yeah. you know, 
there's certain stereotypes attached with that. But yeah. how does one <laughs> how does one come on that journey of self improvement and and kind of trying to educate themselves? Like what drives you to do that? And and what would you want to tell people about the stereotypes associated with your profession? Uh, what's one of the stereotypes that I'm a loser and, uh, <laughs> no, no, I, I mean... couldn't succeed at school. No, no. But you, you know what? It's, it's crazy, right? I don't think, uh, I know, I hope this answers your question. Um, I don't think it matters what you do to evolve. It doesn't matter what is the driving force as long as there's a driving force. Um, and, and like I say, you know, you know, we've talked about this before, but you know, uh, motivation um, and 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 discipline, right? Like, uh, I don't, I can't pinpoint where I got it. I know that uh, obviously having you know uh, someone close to me, like even Steve, uh, well, my brother, okay, yeah, who, you know, I I don't know why we were very intrinsically motivated to constantly be just that one percent better right uh and 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 just trying to figure it out you know what i mean yeah. so i don't i don't think it's important what anyone does to um evolve and get better uh as long as they're on the path of evolving and getting better um for me uh i mean in terms of hairdressing i mean hair i fell into hair like it was like a random <laughs> people are always like well you're clearly a passionate hairdresser uh this is your passion i was like y you know what people are like well, how did you become a hairdresser yeah yeah literally my brother and i were talking one day and I, like i had gone into i had done about 10 years of like uh entertainment so i had a very brief uh you know i hosted a little bit of radio hosted a little bit of television and, and then it was just like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. This is, this is an awful career path. And, uh, but then it came to the point where it was like, you know, like I said, I, and also hosting events, uh, all, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I remember it, it literally came about like this. Me and my brother were literally having a conversation. A la, it was like that episode of Seinfeld where <laughs> <laughs> Jerry and George are talking. They're like, what the hell? <laughs> what the hell are you going to do? <laughs> and George is like, I'm really good at calling the, 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 the ball games. Maybe I could be a sports anchor. They're like, they usually give that to ex ball players. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? So it was literally a conversation. What the hell are you going to do? And I was just throwing out random ideas. And then I was like, well, what about a hairdresser? And my brother was like, that's, that's a stupid idea. And then he's like, he thought about it for a second. And he's like, no, wait a minute. That's, that's probably a really awesome idea. You know, he, he saw like the day to day, your day to day is going to be pretty good. Yeah. You're not working in an office environment. He goes, eventually you can, you can wear whatever the hell you want. You you're constantly in a, you know, if you're smart about it, you're constantly in a field where you're learning more and more. Um, uh, your day to day is pretty good. And, and, you know, like what you were saying in terms about what were you saying in terms of, uh, stereotypes, what's a major stereotype? What that I'm not. <laughs> well, no, I mean, there's a that lot of, gay? <laughs> well, is well, that, that's... Is that the <laughs> no, no, I mean, that's, that's one of them, but I guess what I was trying to touch on is, is, um, people would often wonder, okay, well, what, why the self help? right? How do the yeah. two connect? And yeah. I think you touched on one piece where it was the intrinsic motivation. And I yeah. wanted to tap into that a little bit. Do you feel like that's something innate? Or that's something based on the environment you grew up in that you and your brother, you named as an example, were driven, or you guys were like, no, we, there's something we want to achieve. Yeah. I think uh, in terms of us, uh, uh, let's say, just uh, my whole family and it, it doesn't mean that we have it all figured out or, yeah you know, we're all uh effed up in our own ways <laughs> no no yeah. but um but just to say i think it's from one obviously you know the past of my dad yeah right yeah um i think can i say that here i could say that well 
you can say whatever you want, but no, I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, he was a very <laughs> a bad uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I think uh, that being the case, and I mean, that, that um, scenario is kind of, you know, uh, stepping out of it. It is pretty crazy that that's like, I grew up in that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was so bad that I think one, here's what it did. It made our family tight as tight AF. Obviously yeah. I can't swear on the show, right? No, you can. Uh, I'll just no, no, change no. the explicit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 18 and over. John's on. Yeah. Uh, no, but okay. So it, it made me and my family, you know, let's say my mom and uh, me and my uh, brothers extremely tight and we kind of had a sense of humor about the whole thing and so it, it, first of all that made us laugh about anything like it's like the pain was so hard that all we could do was just laugh about it right yeah so it, it honestly uh, uh, that obviously shaped uh, my character obviously being able to like laugh at just about any scenario yeah. so we had that i think the thing that in terms of making me want to get it and be better was just um i could say partial come coming from like uh getting i guess heartbroken very early very yeah. young yeah uh relationships mm -hmm. and, and then just going but 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 I, I i did everything i was supposed to do right so it's like I do the things that, you know, uh, mainstream, not even just mainstream, but like you know, that your mom tells you to do and that everybody tells you just be a good person, uh, yeah. whatever. And then you're there and you're like, I think there's something else going on here. There's 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 like uh, something I'm not aware of. Something is happening. And it's like seeking that like, is there something here that I don't know that I that, that I should know. And just, obviously I think all good things, you know, people talk about, I don't care what you do to be better, whether it's vengeance, <laughs> but it like harnessed vengeance. You know what I mean? I don't mean vengeance going back out and going to harm somebody, but vengeance in like the, I, I'll show you, I, I'm, I'm going to get better. I'm going to show you. Yeah. I'm going to show yeah. you how, how much I, I how, how good I can, how good I can be. Right. 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 So it's that having that chip on your shoulder. Right. Yeah. Um, I guess with your family too, you mentioned like, you know, it made you guys closer and it's almost like that concept, like we've talked about evolution too, but yeah. it's almost like that tribe effect, right? Like you guys were yeah. like a tribe and just trying to survive um, yeah. at that time. And, and that's what kind of brought you guys together. Yeah. And a shitload of talks. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm lucky uh, now I find myself like it's, it's a bit of both, right? It's one, you got to be surrounded by, uh, good, strong people. Yeah. You're, you cannot help the things that you're watching, the people that you surround yourself with, it is rubbing off on you. You better surround yourself and watch and read and listen to and be around whatever the hell it is, uh, uh, with positive, constructive, um, things right like yeah be around you know well and that's the kind of the message i tell people too like especially going through my divorce i think uh you know there was so much negativity around it and what kind of helped me was surrounding myself with positive people right yeah. and and that's kind of the message i tell others too who are in similar situations i'm like you can't really navigate through that adversity unless you're around positivity and yeah. and you can't do it alone either so you need to surround yourself with those types of people yeah people ha ha having uh y y like i would say you got to surround yourself with those people and i think you have to actively like i said the one th in terms of being uh loved i'm very lucky i had a very uh, uh nurturing uh mother perhaps uh, a little bit too much <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh so that i'm not complaining i'm not you know, I'm grateful yeah. for that. Yeah. 
but uh, in terms of, let's say, I, I lacked everything in terms of a father's guidance. And yeah. I'm not playing the victim card. It's just like, we all start from a different point. If you're starting from, you know, uh, I equate it to like, let's say poker, <laughs> bad example. I don't even play poker, but <laughs> just to say, you all, you're all dealt a different hand of cards. Right. You can still win the game. Yes, you can. Yeah. Yeah. You can still win the hand. So not everybody's starting from the same place. I, I'm starting from a place where it's like zero, zero guidance. Yeah. Zero. And it's like, you just kind of have to figure it out. Mm -hmm. But you have to actively figure it out. It's been 20 years. Yeah. Yeah. You know what For I mean? Sure. I started 18, 17, 18 years old. Second I left high school. It was like, uh, I got to get better. Yeah. I got to be better. What am I missing? 20 years later, I'm still missing things. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's a never ending journey for sure. Uh, you know, I feel the same way. Uh, but I mean, it's great. Like, you know, um, I did want to touch on like, even for us, you know, we've known each other for like 25 years almost now. <laughs> That's and insane. And, and there was times like, you know, I, I want people to know that, you know, I left Canada, I moved to Pakistan. So I was on the other end of the world. Um, you know, we met in high school and, and then I came back for university and, you know, I ran into you at movie theater once we connected, we connected for a bit, but then, you know, I just think we weren't ready. And then I remember going through my own, I wouldn't call it midlife crisis because I was only 30 when my son was born, but I yeah. felt like something was missing in my life. And for some reason I reached out to you. And since then we've, you know, we've connected. And even though we live, uh, you know, at the, across the country, we've yeah. still maintained that uh, relationship, which is great. But what I'm trying to get at is even over the last few years, just watching you evolve and, you know, it's been, it's been an honor to watch, but <laughs> you are here now. Uh, so you've got your own, salon yeah uh, you know and and anytime i talk to you i i know you've got a lot of a lot of plans for the future yeah um so where do you see yourself going with this um and and what's what's yeah what's the journey ahead i mean look man um the journey is like look i feel as though um i know that <clears throat> because i've started in terms of like financially, I feel like right now, it, this has been my first very good year. And, uh, and I, mean, I don't mean very good <laughs> a million dollars here, uh, but my first year where it's like, I've invested everything in this. Uh, 37 years old, this is my, I, I, I don't, I'm not ashamed to admit it. Uh, because I've invested everything in my education, everything in my, uh, let's say, business, ev like everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so it's like, imagine 37 years old, I just bought my first car. Crazy, right? Well, what's crazy is you had to learn how to drive after. <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew how to drive. Oh, I'm, I had no, to I don't. I had to relearn how to drive. Uh, uh, all right, now, John, turn the car. How do you turn? <laughs> no, no, and I, you know, I appreciate that. And, and you know, I know it's easy for me to say, but, you know, I, I feel like we're never too old for anything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. you know, I'm happy to see you where you are. And uh, I'm sure you've got a lot ahead of you. Yeah, um, man, look, uh, I, I just think, you know what? The goal now, honestly, there is no goal. The goal is to have no goal. Huh? I just hit you with some Buddhist shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to write that down and think about it. <laughs> no, but um, honestly, uh, the whole time, you know, I've always been just been thinking, how do I get 1% better? And now I obviously still do it uh, within my career and for myself, always having new goals. Uh, I have, I have, I have, go I have so many goals. I can't even count. I got goals in every, uh, area of life, uh, right now, uh, in terms of physical shape, uh, I'm in the best physical shape I've ever been in. 
Yeah. Um, uh, now it's like my job is going better than it ever has. My whole business and everything I have, I own. I it everything is paid for. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, like uh, obviously breaking it down and let's say um, let's say health, wealth, uh, let's say love and relationships. Uh, I love, when I say love, it's like friendships, family. Yeah. For sure. uh, and uh, romantic relationships, which is, <clears throat> this is going horrible. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, but uh, I have goals in all of those uh, areas. And I just feel like uh, they've all gotten, it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of effort uh, and a lot of awareness and constant work and uh, ability to accept feedback and um, you know openness, and then it, it's like everything has just gotten gradually better and better. So what do I have yeah. for the future? Just evolve, man. That's the goal. That's the goal in every way. Get better. That's the goal. Learn new things. I want to learn. Uh, <laughs> it's going to take me ten years, but I want to learn how to fight or yeah. whatever. Right? Like yeah. um, uh, anything to make me just Did that one percent fight? better. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I just heard like the the lightweight champion retired in UFC, so I don't know. <laughs> He's lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, well so, like, just yeah. No, I was just gonna. Man. I was just gonna ask with the goals. Um, like, how do you hold yourself accountable? Like, you know, and you know, I'm I'm trying to preach in my coaching practice about setting goals and. Uh, keeping them realistic but you know if you've got too many how are you holding yourself accountable and at what point do you look at some of them and you're like okay this is this is a longer term thing I'm going to put this away for for a little while and and then bring it back later um you, I, I'm, I'm less obsessed with the actual outcome of the goal I, I don't know if like um I'm more I love practice. Uh, I'm opposite Allen Iverson. <laughs> We're talking about practice. Practice. <laughs> I, I, I'm obsessed with that. You know, um, I'm obsessed with putting in input in anything, and, and, and then over time seeing the output that I'm able to get. Right. I, I but I I think you gotta love. You, you know, all these guys like Goggins, you know, Goggins doesn't believe in motivation because he goes one day you could be motivated and the next day you may not be right. Yeah. And he, he's all about discipline. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't want to do those things, but he does it. Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I, it's weird. It's like uh, in terms of uh, everyone's trying to avoid pain when it's like pain I can't see any other motivator. Yeah. You know, I'm not motivated. I, I don't do stuff in life. I would say uh, n nine times out of 10, I'm not trying to be comfortable in anything. Every time I see people that are just a little too comfortable, I don't know, man. To me, that's, that's the, that would be the death of me. Yeah, um, yeah. No, and I agree. And I've heard like entrepreneurs talk about the whole, you know, if, if you're feeling comfortable, then you're not really pushing yourself. So, yeah. So, yeah, I definitely agree with, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone, um, trying stuff, new stuff. And then yeah. speaking of new stuff, I think that one of the stories I really wanted to talk about was your experience with the silent retreat. So, <laughs> like... And, and there's a reason why uh, it's, it's not just for the comedic purposes, um, but, but yeah, like just share how this whole silent retreat thing came about, yeah. uh, how you ended up going and, and what your experience was and what you took yeah. out of it. Yeah, man. I mean, it's crazy to think now that let's say I'm 37. I did that when I was like uh, 22, <laughs> and, which is crazy, right? Yeah. And I, 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 the thing that was crazy is I, that actually happened by accident, okay? So uh, my brother and I had signed up, and it was a good friend of ours. Now she's a big deal uh, in, in Montreal. She's a really big uh, yoga teacher, but it was a very good friend of ours. 
uh, we went to her yoga class back in the day. She was like just starting out and she was like, well, you know what? I'll, I'll make a, a friend class. Like you, your brother can come. It'll be a little, it'll be yoga, but we'll be, we'll do the real thing, but it'll be a little bit more relaxed, right? Like, yeah. um, she could be more of herself, maybe say a joke or whatever, you know? So uh, we're in the class and, and my, my brother's talking to her and uh, we're all good friends from high school back in the day. Anyway, my brother's talking to her and she had already done like, uh, uh up, up, up to that point retreats of like, not even just yoga, but meditation, uh, in India, in Thailand, like she had done, like she had done them all, man. She even did yeah. like you know, 21 days in the dark, uh, all these like, you know, out there things right so 10 day silent meditation retreats and uh the one that she was talking to my brother about was uh vipassana or vipassana what's the proper way i mean everybody has a different pronunciation yeah I, yeah i think it's the latter but uh i yeah. could be wrong <laughs> yeah so uh she's talking to him about that and uh so they're talking basically what it is a 10 day uh silent meditation retreat uh, so they're talking, they're talking and, uh, I'm just there. Like, I, I don't even know how serious this thing <laughs> is. And my brother's like super gun whole body. He's like, you know, man, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Uh, you know? And then I'm just like, yeah, you know what? Put my name on the list. <laughs> never, never having meditated a day in my life, not knowing how serious this thing was going to be had no idea what I was even getting myself into. <laughs> so the day comes and, and, and honestly, it's, it's out in the middle of nowhere and uh, go to this place. And it turns out my brother doesn't <laughs> even end up going. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you're not coming? <laughs> so now I'm literally out in the middle of the, the mountains in the countryside. Uh, I don't know where, like really where I am, what I'm doing, who this group is. So I'm how like, did you end up getting there? Like just. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, it's, um, it's like, it's, a, like... A, 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 it's a known, it's a known retreat, right? Like, okay. It's a okay. Known, you know, so then I'm there, but it's like, I, it's like, I know about it, I, but I don't, I didn't know. I, I didn't know that this specific thing was actually a worldwide, um, you know, Vipisana or Vipassana. It's like they literally have this everywhere, right? Yeah. And, and uh, anyway, so I'm there and I'm like, yo, I'm like, I'm not sure. Is this like a cult? Um, is this like, uh, it's like going to be like Jonestown? <laughs> like, you know, what's going on here? Anyway, so then I get there and um, start the day. And, you know, it, it was so gradual. Uh, so pretty much here's the breakdown. You can't, uh, is, is everything okay with the, yeah? Yeah, yeah, this, we, yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. So um, basically when they say no contact, it's, there's no eye contact, there's no physical contact, there's no verbal contact, and uh, yeah, there's no contact. So you pretty much are meditating in silence and they give you uh, before the day and let's say at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, there's very small instructions of what to do. And every day it goes, it gets more intense. Yeah. And, and uh, am I talking too much? <laughs> no, no, no. So, so I guess the question, so how many people were there with you? Oh, tons, tons, tons. Oh, okay. So it's a Men, large women. group. Yeah. 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 Large group, large group. And um, I would say at least, at least 50 at least like there, there's gotta be like 60 people there, minimum, minimum. Anyway, so uh, you go back to your room. Um, you're either meditating in your room or you're meditating in, in a big, uh, what do you call it? Um, yeah, like the ashram or, or like the temple, right? Essentially. Exactly, the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and every day it just gets more and more instructions, more and more instructions and I, uh, keep in mind, I had never meditated a day in my life. And I, then it went to, I was meditating uh, under their instructions, obviously 10 hours a day uh, in meditation and uh, for 10 days in silence. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, no, 
So there was a part, I, I think when you told me this story the first time there, yeah, the first day, yeah, something about missing your meals. So like, Oh <laughs> yeah. Like, no, the, no, this wasn't the first day. This was like the, uh, probably the fourth day. Right. Yeah. So, uh, pretty much this is the breakdown of the days, right? Uh, you wake up at 4 AM, uh, by 4 30, you have to be basically in the hall meditating. Right. And, uh, there's, uh, only two meals a day. And one of them is at 6 a.m. One of them is at 11 a.m. And that's it. So, you know, I'm not really used to that. I'm used to like eating like t- 10 times a day. Yeah. So uh, I go to, um, I go to breakfast. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, that day, I'm not, uh, I'm wondering, was it breakfast or uh, it was lunch? It was lunch. So, I, I think I had meditated through breakfast that day. I forget what it was. And I was like, you know what? Today I'm going to be like extra disciplined. I'm going to go. And then when they do the, the lunch bell rang and I'm like, you know what I'm going to do, man? I was saying this in my head. Obviously I can't talk. Yeah. Uh, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go back to my room. I'm going to clean my room, take a shower, uh, meditate a little more, whatever. Then go, go to lunch uh, at the end. So then yeah, I end up showing, I do all that. I end up showing up to lunch, uh, you know, maybe like half an hour late and literally all the food has been eaten. So I'm there, like, I'm looking at these like giant pots of barley. (laughs) There's literally like one grain of barley in there. Huge pots of rice, oatmeal, every, all the fruits have been eaten. Everything has been eaten and it's all gone. So I'm just waiting there and I'm like, uh, what the hell am I going to do? And, and you can't talk. And that's the thing. Like, how, and then I, honestly, you can't look at anybody. You can't talk to anybody. I, I literally started banging on pots and pans <laughs> in hopes that people would come deliver more food. <laughs> literally no food. I did a full day. You better believe it. So. I, I was pissed, right? And just hungry. I was weak. <laughs> so then I, I finished the rest of the day not having eaten a thing. So you better believe the next day when I, for, not even just the next day, from that day for, from that day on, every uh, meal bell, there was always like a little gong that went on. Yeah. All you heard <laughs> was just a soft gong gong and they're just Usain Bolt just do, 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 just sprinting down the hall Usain Bolt I was the first in line every day for lunch from that day forward it, it, it was crazy though it, so it, yeah so I mean uh like maybe help me understand like uh so yeah. obviously this happened on the third or fourth day yeah uh, but even to go from like, you, like you said, you know, we are blessed to be able to eat all the time yeah. and, and have food at our disposal. So to go from that to two meals a day. Yeah. And I could imagine myself just being hungry. So how do you oh. transition from that and, and be able to meditate for those first few initial days? And then, like you said, you missed your meal. You were angry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess there's two questions. The, the initial one is a transition. And then after that, how did you change your thought pattern from anger and hunger to be able to continue to focus on, on the meditation? Now, here's the thing. Uh, uh, the, well, the thought pattern is easy. You're, you're there not to think, right? So <laughs> it's like, yeah, but it's easier said than done. Right. So how yeah, do you, yeah, how easy. were you able to, to remove yourself from, from, the, you know, and, and I know you t- told me about the whole, meditation yeah. process right you're yeah. out you're outside your body and you're like this is my body this is the floor this is the air yeah. yeah i will i will say this the first three days were the longest effing days <laughs> sometimes i have nightmares like i wake up and i'm still <laughs> there it's like it, it was the worst three days the first three days are the hardest your your brain is just there's so much chatter, you know, it's like you're, you're so in like your immediate uh, needs, right? And, and you get lost in thought, like you're, 
pretty much you're, you're basically there. I mean, you know, the, the, and this is the thing we laugh about. It's like, there's all these answers in the world. Oh, I gotta do this, gotta do that. You just gotta sit down and shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just sit down and shut up. That's all you gotta do. And it's all going to work itself out. So um, pretty much, yeah. So the, um, how, how did I do it? It's like, you're there and you're, 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 you're following the instructions. And like I said, the, um, the first three days are hard because your, your brain is working like crazy. You're not used to it. Um, and, and you're just following this, this technique and basically all the technique is, you know, um, it's not Buddhism, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's the one meditation that Buddha created, right? This is the one thing that this guy came up with. The the, the philosophy, I guess, that, that that goes along with it, and the 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 practical meditation, which is the most simple meditation there is. Um, and, and you're just doing it step by step, tech like the small technique, observing your sensations, right? observing the breath going in and out of your nostrils uh, at first, right? For like the first three days. Yeah. Uh, and then you just, like I said, you're, you're so focused that you, you literally forget about everything else. And in terms of the meals, it's like you're using so little energy, right? right. By the end of it that, you, you know, you don't even really need to eat, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and like at any point, like, especially that day where, you know, you were pissed, did you ever consider leaving? Uh, I considered leaving. Oh my God. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> I mean, the first three days you're just like, what the hell am I doing here? This is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Right. Yeah. Like, th is this really like, I was just swearing at my brother in my head, just like, you, <laughs> suck, you son of a <laughs> you know, but, um, but yes. And, and here's the thing, even the fourth day, the fourth day is really hard because for the first three days, pretty much what you're doing is you're just observing your sensations, you're breathing, right. And yeah. you're specifically observing your sensations through the nostrils. Cause that's the easiest place to put your attention on. Yeah. And the four, so you're like moving, you're like sitting, you're changing posture. And then the fourth day they tell you, okay, so yeah, I, I had all these like pillows <laughs> to make myself comfortable. Yeah. And on the fourth day they say, okay, so from now on, you know, there's no more pillows and, <laughs> and, and you can't move. Meanwhile, I was like, <laughs> in, in, literally i wasn't even touching the ground i had so many pillows i was like <laughs> the sultan of <laughs> yeah just like uh, swimming <laughs> drowning in pillows <laughs> and and then they tell you from this moment forward uh not only you, you can't have any like pillows or aids or anything to be comfortable uh, and you can't move you have to you have to do the meditation uh like a statue pretty much and, uh, you know, they have their reason for that. Um, yeah. Um, there, do I say the reason or you don't care about the reason? No, I, I mean, feel free to share. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, and like I said, it was funny because this was all an accident, but I, I, I've kept this throughout my life. Right. So uh, pretty much their philosophy is um, uh, to observe nature at this moment at the experiential level. Now, what yeah. the hell does that mean? Right. So you're just being aware, observing the sensations in and around your, in and on your body uh, uh, in the present moment. Right. So, um, you know, you know, things I, I don't want to sound like a, I'm part of any religion or anything like that. But, you know, uh, but Buddha was saying that uh, I'm going to I'm going to mess this up like Tim, the tool man, Taylor with uh, remember you had the neighbor who gives all the wise <laughs> advice <laughs> and then Tim, Tim, the tool man messes it all up. Wilson. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, uh, except I'm not Wilson. I'm Tim, the tool man. Yeah. Um, uh, but basically, you know, the, the thing we are either attached that he realized that people were in, in states of misery for one of two reasons. Mm -hmm. One, 
their attachment to things and their aversion. So their attachment to pleasure and their aversion to pain. Yeah. But here's the thing. These things are coming in your yeah. life. There is no way to avoid pain. Get ready because pain is coming. Yeah. And get re- you're, if you're trying to attach yourself to something, well, the, the law of nature is everything is changing. Whatever is here today will be gone at some point. So if you're attached to it, get ready because it's going to be gone. Yeah, no, and I read that recently too in that Thich Nhat Hanh book, and it's basically accepting the experiences, right? Yeah. You you accept them for what they are, and then you release them through your body, right? Yeah. You let them go. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so that's, I mean, yeah, and that's exactly. And, so, and then so people go, okay, what the hell's that got to do with the meditation, right? Yeah. So here's what it, literally, it, it translates Perfectly. So you're sitting there. Now, when you're sitting there and you're observing sensations on like in and on your body, you're going to experience some sensations are very pleasure. Uh, like uh, you will experience pleasure. You know, like you'll, you'll be, you'll be sitting there and you'll get like a gust of wind and you'll be like, Oh, that feels so good. <laughs> I just, I love that win so much right yeah and you're also going to be experiencing excruciating pain sit in the same position for an hour and tell me if your back doesn't hurt right yeah yeah so what do what do we normally do right when we experience pain in life or in anything well we change our position and we get comfortable again yep right or we avoid the pain right are you exactly so it's like if you're sitting you need to be aware now your unconscious response and your habit is, oh, pain in the back. Oh, I got, I got pain. I got pain. Oh, I'm just, oh, I sit like this. I'm fine now. Yeah. No more pain, right? We're constantly trying to avoid pain. So mm-hmm. it's like you need to sit there through the pain and yeah. observe the pain and not, not think of it as, ah, I, 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 oh my God, oh my God, the pain, oh my God, the pain. It's okay. John is experiencing a sensation in his lower back, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's through that observation of, and, and it's no association to this is a pleasurable sensation or whatever. And this is a, a, a painful sensation. You're just sitting there and you're observing everything. Right. And that's it. So, so by day 10, would you say, you know, obviously gradually you became better at that whole yeah. process yeah, 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 yeah. And you're still, do you still utilize the practices uh, even now? I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's... yeah, I do. I, I, yeah. So I would say this, the, the, it's funny. It's like it, it, the whole point is like it, they tell you, and, and again, I obviously have uh, still trouble with that. It's like the whole point is to not have the goal, right? Not, don't try to seek out this, the, 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 this some type of sensation, right? Yeah. Uh, don't try to to get, to attain something. It's just be there and observe. That's it. That's the only thing you're doing. So, but I will say this: the days that I was able to really, I guess, do it very well and experience something was on the sixth day and the ninth day. And here's all it was: you're all at least all I felt, let's say, right? So it's like, you're obviously your eyes are closed. You, you know, you're, you're pretty much shutting your, uh, your sensations off, right? Yeah. So you're, you're not really, you're not using your nose to smell, your eyes to see, your hands to touch, your tongue to take, you're not using your senses. And you're just feeling these sensations, like I said, in and on your body, right? Yeah. And you, your focus becomes so um, sharp. Yeah. That you're literally able, and this was the most messed, it was the most messed up feeling. You're able to feel every single vibration in your body. Like I, I, and you're able to focus. I swear I was able to go, I was able to shut everything off and say, I just want to feel my left pinky nail. Yeah. And I could feel it. 
that's how sharp your focus becomes and you're just or you're feeling everything at the same time which literally feels i mean look i've never done drugs but i can imagine there are certain drugs <laughs> that can you could probably achieve the same thing yeah i'm uh, sure there are <laughs> you know like uh, you could probably achieve the same thing but like by popping something I, I don't know but this was literally like it was the most insane feeling i'm not talking about you know i i, I never had anything i floated out of my body or anything like that yeah yeah but it was just i could feel i could feel nature yeah i i, I could i could feel nature that this is what it this is what it is it was mine yeah. honestly mind-blowing mind-blowing it, it really was the craziest the craziest thing so anyone listening then you know they should go try this out <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, I I remember there was one. Uh, you know, it was just so funny. There was actually one time when I actually did break the silence. It, it, I'm so like I apologize to the guy, but it was like I wasn't. I was just like we were in the meditation hall, and my body just let out the hugest yawn. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like right behind the guy's ear. And I was like, <laughs> and the guy turned around. He's like, yo. And I was like, oh, I was like, shit. Sorry, man. I was like, oh. And then I spoke. I was like, oh, God. Yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah. But well, yeah, but uh, still the best. Uh, it was the it was the best and worst experience of my life. It was just it was everything. And, yeah. and it was everything, man. Uh, the best accident I ever, ever had. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks for uh, sharing that story. Um, <laughs> no, that's great. I mean, every time I hear it, I, it blows my mind. So uh, I'm glad you shared it. Um, so we are close to on time. Um, oh, man. But this was great for the first episode. I, you know, Damn. Yeah, it went really quick. Um, but, but for people that want a dope haircut or want to <laughs> find you, um what's the best way of getting a hold of you uh, i don't know what, what's the best way of getting a hold of me <laughs> he's all nothing <laughs> <laughs> well youtube but no i won't <laughs> um you know facebook instagram and and what's your where how do they find you uh john ciccioni j-o-h-n-c-i-c-i-o-n-e perfect and and you know i will say this like if you're in the montreal area or if you're visiting montreal go see john for a haircut uh full disclosure <laughs> i did i mean i did once fly to montreal obviously to see my parents but also to get a haircut from you so <laughs> yeah, this guy's amazing and, and the hangout and the hangout well yeah yeah yes the hangout so after the haircut. It. oh man i feel like there's so much we we well, we, we're, we're going to do this again. The, this is definitely not the last time. Um, yeah. But uh, no, I'm so grateful. And thank you so much for, for doing this with me. This was Are you crazy, awesome. Man, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm just going to, yeah, for the listeners, again, please leave a review. Um, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more episodes. Thank you.